Her Majesty has darted all around the UK in recent weeks. Spending some time in Scotland to honour Holyrood Week and travelling to Cornwall to attend the G7 summit with some key world leaders. On Thursday, she popped into the Coronation Street set and toured the ITV studios, while the week before that she greeted German Chancellor Angela Merkel and attended the Windsor Horse Show. Although she is 95, these latest activities suggest she has no intention of slowing down or retiring from the public eye anytime soon. Avid royal fans have also spotted how delighted the Queen has appeared during most of these outings, in a strong contrast to the vulnerability she displayed in the days following Philip's death. Some commentators expected the monarch to retreat from the public eye after her husband of 73 years died, like her ancestor the widowed Queen Victoria did. While the Queen appears to have made Philip's final resting place, Windsor Castle, her permanent base now, she has defied expectations and continued to enjoy her busy schedule. On Pod Save the Queen, host and gripper and Daily Mirror royal editor Russell Myers looked into how the monarch has managed to re-engage with public life once again. Moore's gripper said, she looks like she's enjoying being back at work and seeing people. Mr. Myers noted that there is a theory about why the monarch seems so upbeat. Mr. Myers explained, of course she's still mourning, but her and Philip and had a long-held promise that whoever would go first, or be left behind rather, would mourn the other one, but not for too long, and would get on with the business of running the family, running the monarchy, the country, and doing the role. And Philip knew how important that was to the Queen and if the Queen had unfortunately passed before him, you probably wouldn't have seen Philip retire. You probably would have seen him heading up the family in a different way, instructing the family on how to do things. He concluded, I think this, energy from the Queen, is an actual cause of him passing and the conversations the Queen and Philip had had before his unfortunate death. He added that the monarch has not stopped, recently. The royal family mourned Philip officially for a two-week period after his death in April, and they only went on official engagements when they were deemed appropriate. During that distinct time frame, the Queen actually turned 95 but refrained from celebrating it in any public capacity and instead released a somber statement which acknowledged her grief at Philip's absence. It read, I have, on the occasion of my 95th birthday today, received many messages of good wishes, which I very much appreciate. While as a family we are in a period of great sadness, it has been a comfort to us all to see and to hear the tributes paid to my husband from those within the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth, and around the world. My family and I would like to thank you all for the support and kindness shown to us in recent days. We have been deeply touched and continue to be reminded that Philip had such an extraordinary impact on countless people throughout his life. She previously described the Duke of Edinburgh as her strength and stay, and did take some time in her Frogmore estate to reflect on her loss, according to the Daily Mail. However, when she turned 21, years before she ascended the throne, the Queen vowed to dedicate her entire life, be it long or short, to the public. She promised, I declare that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. During her most recent engagements, the Queen has delighted royal fans by delivering several witty one-liners in public including describing then-Health Secretary Matt Hancock as a poor man, just days before he chose to resign. She also looked ecstatic to be attending the Royal Ascot races for the first time since 2019 last month.